I was recently invited by Riot to playtest an early version of Project L. It was a ton of fun and I want to share with you what I learned, what I liked and what I didn't like about the game. The first thing that stood out to me was just the sheer number of game mechanics and options that you have in the game. So just on defense, you have retreating guard, you have push block, you have parry, you have low parry, you can do a get up attack, you can air recover in three different directions, you can quick rise, you can back roll, there's also hard knockdowns and soft knockdowns, and that's why I'm including all the mechanics with your assist. And there's five different fuses, which are kind of like your groove or style that your team has. So it was a lot to take in. <laughs> and even towards the end of the play session, there was a lot of things that I still wasn't implementing. Parry especially, it seems quite strong because you can get a full combo if you parry something. But I was just trying to learn the basics of the game. I think everyone was. There's a lot to take in, but it also means that the game has a lot of depth to it as well. So Project L is a six button game. You have a light, medium, heavy attack button. So you have two special buttons and in this game, there's no motion input. So it's just direction plus special button in order to get the special of your choice. So very similar to DNF um, where you have two special buttons and they each do a different thing. They're both mapped to different specials. And then you have a tag button, which basically enables all of your partner interactions. It felt a little different because I was trying to play it like BB tag, but every time I go for like a assist I call and BB tag. The buttons were mapped differently, like the way you call assist, the way you call different things. But it's a weird control scheme. I've just never played a game like that, so it was a little confusing to get to, especially because a lot of the controls are two button combinations, right? So dash is light plus medium, parry is low plus heavy. And your burst is like a special plus your assist button so it's just a lot of combinations and like oftentimes i catch myself like trying to do an assist and i'd actually just do a special and then i'd die <laughs> but a lot of my time was just spent you know playing around with the mechanics just trying to get better fundamentally at the game i did try every character ari is the character i spent the most time with she just felt the strongest and the most flexible out of the characters to me and you know as a waifu enthusiast I, of course i have to play ari <laughs> she's had very good specials um the three balls that kind of surround her it's like your unique mechanic where if you release a ball basically you can do it anytime during your move it kind of reminds me of like happy chaos gunshot you have like three happy chaos gunshots and you, if you just throw off one at a time you'll make a negative move plus and you can use it for like mix up and stuff echo is really cool i actually wanted to play echo at first i like that kind of set play style and i really like his uh rewind time mechanic but he honestly he felt really hard to me i'm like i need to spend like days with this character in the lab just to learn the combos and knockdown setups and he felt like I just needed to pour a lot of time into the lap with him. But Darius, on the other hand, Darius, I enjoy playing Darius. He was a day one monster. I mean, literally, this guy is very, very basic. You literally do a block string into his pool and move, and then you get free 50 50. Yeah, if you want to beat people at Evo, just do Darius's S1 attack, pull them in, and then do either the command grab follow up or the overhead follow up and enjoy your free wins. <laughs> but um, yeah, Ari is cool. Echo is cool. I really like how much depth some of the characters had too. The execution is a little interesting. It reminded me a lot of bb tag where the combos look kind of easy but they can actually be pretty hard and you know even towards the end of us playing like we we're still dropping the easy bread and butters um sometimes so it, it's cool how this game does have an execution barrier despite being modern controls which i really appreciate but speaking of bb tag i used to play that game a lot same thing with mvci and i compare project l to those games all the time and some of the things that are similar like how assists work how combos feel the pacing of the gameplay so for what i liked about the game and what i didn't like about the game is really a comparison to those games of course all this information i passed on to the devs but i kind of wanted to go through what i liked and what i didn't like the first thing is i think the graphics are awesome especially when you compare it to mvci that game looked like trash this game looks awesome even compared to bb tag i think this game looks very well put together it's honestly one of the most gorgeous fighting games i've seen it's probably on par with uh good to strive for me looks great i really like the ui animations are great games really really colorful it's full of personality i, I don't what else to say i think graphically this game is top notch what i didn't expect was the movement to feel really really good the movement reminds me a lot of marvel 3 and you know you have people that have played marvel 3 on the dev team so it kind of makes sense that this would be a thing but you have wave dashing where you can cancel a dash into another dash back dash wave dashing is really really fast too and the screen is like bigger than a normal screen and like a lot of 2d fighting games so it feels like you have the movement to go around so just in general neutral felt really really good another reason why neutral felt really good is there's like 
like there wasn't any bullshit in neutral <laughs> like i don't know if you guys have played like mvci or bb tag but one of the problems i had with that game was you could just do a full screen move and two assists and then you get a free 50 50 and at least with these characters there wasn't anything that just screamed this is bullshit neutral <laughs> let me just neutral skip like you had to play pretty honest neutral in order to get in and that felt really good just moving around super jumping jumping trying to get that hit it felt really nice i think the other thing that makes it not as neutral skippy as bb tag is the assist didn't feel as strong as bb tag so like bb tag has a lot of full screen assist very tough to react to assist and this game you can make your assist full screen but you have to hold the button and it takes forever for them to come out and you have to protect them because the strength of assists are a lot less it's easier to play neutral so to speak you have to really be tactical with your assist and i really like that because there was a lot of moments where like there was just so much neutral tension that i'm like oh this feels so good like i have to move around and outplay you to in order to win is what i really enjoy about a fighting game and just a fuse system i thought it was really cool i've always a big fan of cvs2 and his groove system so for you guys i don't know cvs2 has six different grooves and basically changes how your team is meant to be played now i don't think the fuse system is as impactful as the groove system but it really changes up your team dynamic and some teams are going to have a more optimal fuse just like some characters in cvs2 have a more optimal groove so the whole time that i played i kept it easy <laughs> so there's a couple of fuses that are a lot easier to use one is the recommended fuse which is called fury and it basically just gives you a damage bonus and a dash cancel which is like super easy to use a one-time dash cancel i initially i stuck with that because i'm like well it's free damage okay <laughs> why not go with that and i found it like kind of boring and so i actually switched to uh, double super so you can do like a dhc or you can super from one character and then switch in super with the other character and so so I could get a lot more damage off my combos, which felt really good. But realistically, I think the harder fuses were the better ones. So especially the one it's called freestyle. And so you get two tag ins or what they call handshakes in this game. Like if you've ever played BB tag, you know how cheap that is. You have to spend tons of resources in order to do multiple tags at once. And in this game, you just have to choose the right fuse. That sounds insanely broken to me. And it wouldn't surprise me if that was the best fuse for, for most teams. That's the one I would probably play, but it takes a little time in order to like get those optimal offensive sequences so you can use the double switching and the other thing i like was team gameplay so you can play this game 2v2 which i thought was gonna be really boring because i thought i'd just be sitting on the side and it turns out there's a lot to it because this game is so fast paced you really hyper focus on like moments where you can contribute if you're sitting on the side right so calling your assist <laughs> when your partner is out is so much harder than i thought it'd be because you really have to analyze the situation you have to kind of coordinate with your partner you have to think about when to use burst i kept getting like jump scared because like if you're on point you can tag out to your partner and <laughs> it's really 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 fast if you're not paying attention like the first like 10 times it happened i tagged in i was like oh shit i just got hit because i i didn't even realize i was being tagged in i teamed with jam crofts uh pretty much the whole time and we'd have to like tell each other like hey i'm tagging in <laughs> Because like visually it's just so fast to react so it requires like a lot more precision and awareness than you think from a team-based game and honestly i actually enjoy 2v2 more because there's kind of like that camaraderie that you have with your teammate and there's a lot of like strategies like after every match we think like oh hey i bet if you do this then it would work and we kind of like come up with new strategies on the fly which is super super cool because you don't normally have that camaraderie aspect in a 1v1 setting so let's talk about what i didn't like so kind of with the team thing so you could play 2v1 in this and my, my personal thought and again i haven't played that much compared to the devs i personally think being on a team of one is way more broken than being on a team of two one of the reasons i think is that it's impossible to time certain assist calls if it's two people so take for example if i want to do move plus assist on the same frame no matter how good you coordinate with your teammate it's going to be impossible to do just certain things like in the long term training with a teammate consistently compared to you know just going on ranked and playing solo and there's there's just certain techniques that feel like it's really impossible to do when you have two people on the second day we had like a tournament <laughs> so to speak the top three were all single players and i actually as much as i wanted a team with jm crofts i had to break up with him because i think teams are just too hard to win with at least at this point of you know when we don't have very much experience in the game i did get third in that tournament by the way i lost to jay wong twice barely lost him both times sonic fox ended up taking first so but it was uh it was super fun i'm looking forward to competing in project Elmore. but yeah one of my feedbacks was if you're really trying to push 
establish a 2v2 aspect, which I think you should because honestly, partnering up with someone is really, really fun and it has a lot of like unique advantages over fighting games. You should give people more incentive to team up with people. Maybe it's a damage buff. Maybe it's like reduce assist cooldown. Maybe it's certain techniques that aren't like overly powerful, but just something that balances out the freedom and all the other advantages that a one person team would have. All right, this con should have been first, but some of these controls didn't feel intuitive at all, um, especially push block and burst. The amount of accidental push blocks and bursts I've gotten, I was raging at a certain point. It was super frustrating. Definitely like the first feedback I gave. So burst, if you try to call forward special plus assist, you get a special and assist, and it's really good. Well, if you do normal special and assist, you actually get burst. <laughs> I eventually got used to it, but especially like if you miss that forward input or something like that, you accidentally get burst. That was really frustrating because if you get one accidental burst, you basically lost the game because burst is so important. So what I recommend is just change it to like a three button input so you can't accidentally get it. And the second thing was push block. So push block is typically done with like two attack buttons. And in this game, you do it with L and M, but that's also your dash. So let's say you're trying to like block and then like someone ends in something negative and you're trying to dash at them, like you're trying to dash block. And and you dash block a little bit too like you dash at them a little bit too early you get forward and dash and block stun and you accidentally push block them away <laughs> so you're trying to actually just dash when you, when it's your turn and you'll just get a push block so maybe change that to like a different two button combination maybe it should be l and h just because that that's not used by anything and you won't get excellent push block at all defense felt extremely rough <laughs> so it's more of like at our level, it didn't feel bad, but I got a chance to play a couple of the devs who, by the way, the devs smoked all of us extremely hard because they've been playing this game for who knows how long. And you just get put into like extremely messed up mix up situations, especially with the freestyle where you get the two assists. So you're basically like blocking 50 50 after 50 50, or you're trying to block unblockables, and it just felt really overwhelming. And it kind of seems like what the meta is. I really like how there's like a soft knockdown where you can like tech, but pretty much every combo ends in like a hard knockdown anyway. So you never got to like tech out of a mix up. So I, I maybe it's just me, like I need to get better and learn to utilize parry more, but it felt like defense was extremely hard and like the mechanics weren't certain super great outside of retreating guard which by the way i think retreating guards a really really cool mechanic you basically just dash out of it feels like you're just dashing out of pressure which just feels really nice and cool to do but my solution to this is probably just make things more soft knockdown so you can get out of things easier last concern is just how hard the game is to pick up for beginners like i said there's so many different mechanics in this game whether it's from all the defensive options or all the different fuses or the fact that you have to learn two characters at once there's no like like certain accessible options that more modern games have like an auto combo doesn't exist in this game so what i suggested to the devs and i, th I think this is my most brilliant idea is add like a easy mode fuse you don't have to use it it's obviously intended for beginners and if you just mash buttons you get like a full combo in the super or something like that that way beginner players can do really cool stuff and then it's like training wheels for when you actually graduate and you want to use a better fuse so to speak but overall, um, the trip was great. Um, I got to meet many new faces, got to meet the dev team, got to meet uh, familiar faces as well. Um, but yeah, your boys slowly starting to become esports, I guess. I don't know. Definitely did not think I was getting invited to something like this. So appreciate all your support on YouTube and appreciate Riot for uh, having me come out. I said this many times before, but when I heard of this in like 2019 or wherever they announced it, any company, like any premium company, including Riot, a free to play AAA game that models itself similar to other esports is exactly what the FGC needs to join like the top tier esports markets, right? I, I think the, the model needs to evolve. I think Riot, the general impression I got is that they are working to evolve the model and I'm really hopeful for this game's future. So fingers crossed it comes out at a reasonable time. Just another side note, the team behind this game really impressed me. Not just from like the amount of FGC OG players they have or like the very intelligent, well-informed discussions I have with some of the developers, but we're supposed to be there for like eight hours and we ended up staying like super late, like an extra four hours. And I figured like all the dev, most of the devs would go home and like, you know, it's like a nine to five, you know, your work shifts is over, but like tons of them stayed <laughs> like the passion you could see from the team and just everything they do from whether they how they lay up and talking about the game or you know staying late just to watch people play and get feedback i thought was like super super cool to see and you can tell i, I think this game's in the right hands
anyways, guys, if you like the video, like, share, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell to see more videos like this. I'm going to make at least one more video just analyzing Project L gameplay. I'll stream it as well and um, kind of give my high-level breakdown of you know some gameplay. And let me know in the comments below what you guys think about this game. As always, take care, y'all. Have a good day. Peace.